Welcome to Tech Magic. In this video, I'll show you how to find the right Chrome OS recovery image for your computer using AI. This method ensures you get the correct Chrome OS recovery file without confusion. Each Chrome OS recovery image is designed for specific CPUs. Using the wrong one can cause boot errors, so let's start by identifying your CPU. Open Task Manager, go to the Performance tab, and select CPU. You'll find your processor details in the top right corner. For example, my PC shows Intel i3-10105, the 10 after i3 means it's a 10th gen CPU. I know my 10th gen CPU is listed as GeneLon on GitHub, but I'm showing this for those whose CPU isn't listed and need the right recovery image. Open ChatGPT and ask Chromebooks with your processor name and generation. Let's ask for an Intel 10th gen processor. Then, turn on web search and click send. GPT will list all the models with that processor generation. Select any one, I will choose Acer Chromebook 712 and copy the name. Go to cross.tech, links are in the description. Paste the copied name here and search. And download the latest available version. I'm downloading a different version. On GitHub, it says GeneLon for my 10th gen processor, but this will work 100%. I'll show you the installation and boot process. 6th gen or older CPUs, Brunch must match your Chrome OS version. If your CPU supports Chrome OS 114, download the same Brunch version for compatibility. Remember, you won't receive updates. Only 8th gen and newer CPUs get updates. Now, download the necessary files one by one. All links are provided in the description. First, Brunch Framework. Second. Linux Mint which helps with Chrome OS installation, third, installation script, fourth, Rufus, to create a bootable USB. Once all files are downloaded, insert a USB drive, at least 32 gigabytes, and open Rufus. Make sure your USB drive is selected, now, click select, open the Linux Mint ISO file, and set the file system to NTFS. Once everything is set, click start, then click OK, OK, and OK again. This process will take around 10 minutes to complete. Once done, close Rufus and create a folder named Chrome OS. Then, select the brunch, Chrome OS, and installation script archives and extract them directly into the Chrome OS folder we created. After extracting, open the Chrome OS folder. Find the Chrome OS recovery image file and rename it to Chrome OS.bin. Make sure there are no extra characters in the file name, as the wrong name can cause installation errors. Now, copy the entire Chrome OS folder to the Linux USB drive we created. Open this PC, go to the USB drive, and paste the folder there. Once the copy is complete, restart your computer and enter the BIOS setup. Go to the boot section in BIOS, disable secure boot, then save and exit the setup. Now, enter the boot menu by pressing the appropriate key for your manufacturer, e.g., F12, F9, Escape, or Dell. Choose UEFI USB Partition 1, then press Enter. Choose Linux Mint and press Enter. After booting into Linux Mint, connect to the Internet. Now, open File Manager and select File System from the sidebar. Now, right-click inside File Manager and select Open as Root. Then, open the CD-ROM folder, and inside it, open the Chrome OS folder. For the next steps, we need to identify our disk type. To do that, open Gparted. Search Gparted from the Linux Mint menu and open it. My disk type is SDA, so I will run SDA.sh. Your computer might have a different disk type, such as SDB, MMCBLK, or NVMe, so check it in Gparted and run the respective .sh file accordingly. Double-click on the .sh file, then select Run in Terminal. Press Y and then Enter. Now, type Yes and press Enter. Wait for the installation to complete, it will take around 15 minutes. Once finished, shut down your computer, remove the USB drive, press enter, and then turn it back on. 
Now, your system will boot into Chrome OS. Complete the basic setup, such as connecting to Wi-Fi, signing into your Google account, and customizing your preferences. I chose a different image file instead of the one from GitHub, but it's working perfectly fine. All my apps, settings, and desktop wallpapers have synced without any issues. Thanks for watching. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech tutorials.